such a way that the guys in game can't actually hear you. I just have oh. to hit the push to talk button, which I didn't oh. because I didn't know you were gonna oh. say something. But well, you know, everybody in chat, good luck, have fun. Everybody in chat, yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, so we are going to yeah, be going go into the uh, operator bands here. So Phoenix is going to be going second. Surf is going to be going first. First, the attackers, uh, as we're uh, right, will be Thatcher. Not too surprised with that, uh, with the amount of utility that is now coming into Siege. Him being off the board makes the most sense. Uh, so It's kind of become a crutch ban, hasn't it? Kind of. It, it, I feel like it's a safe ban. Like it, you're not yeah. you're not putting your neck out there. There's a lot of strategy that goes around not having Thatcher. So having him off the board is is a no brainer. Maverick, uh, again, I'm not surprised. It's an interesting pick, but it's not a surprising pick. Again, with him now having frag grenades, uh, it is not. Uh, he's just a, a little bit more dangerous. His torch has always been something to really watch out for. It being so quiet. So having him again off the board, not too worried about this. Mira though, okay. So, we have now Thatcher. I'm just writing all this down. Thatcher, Maverick, Mira. Mira, again, very safe pick. Not very not very surprised by that. She's just a super powerful operator, just in general, on any map. And yeah, I remember, I remember when Rainbow Six Competitive, the operator bans were added. Like, Mira mains just said, okay, that's over. She's going to be banned. <laughs> Every single map, every single game, I have to start maining or start, uh, at the very least, getting comfortable with the second def the defense sided operator. And you know, you don't really see too many Mira bans anymore, because, alright, she's not granted banned every single round, but she's mm -hmm. still banned the majority of the time. Yes, and now, a lot of what, the, what a lot of the Mira mains did is they went over to Valkyrie. So, Valkyrie and, obviously... Uh, he's still on the board, Echo. They do the same thing, just in a different way. So it's just a lot more intel that you can gather. Granted, Valkyrie is the weakest of them to pick. Uh, Echo having his drones uh, being visible and a little bit more harder to hit is a little bit better to have. But as he's also banned, um, you have to try and be creative. As we see here, we have a Mozzie on the board who just takes advantage of drones that are already there, and it makes it much harder for the attackers to push in and get the intel. So you're, rather than getting getting the intel on the attackers, you're just denying it in the sense of, you know, uh, they're not able to know where you are. And at the same time, you are, uh, if you do get a drone, you're almost, almost doing like a Valkyrie-like role. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So what I kind of like with Mozzie, he's he's not just gathering gathering intel, he's also denying intel to his opponents, you know, which, all, uh, on top of serving a double uh, a double sided role, it makes him really good for a solo operator. You know, if he's roaming, he's not just denying the the intel on his exact uh, exact roam position, but he's also like gathering an advanced warning system to know when and where the anti roamers are going to be coming from. Granted, he needs to be sitting on the cameras, with, which makes him vulnerable, but, you know, with a good timing, he can have so much more potential than, say, a Vigil or even a Cavera, in my opinion. Yes. And so, as we see here, they're going to be setting up shop over here in uh, security room. Pretty standard hold from here. Maz is just making some rotation holds with that uh, shotgun. And we're going to be uh, kind of be starting off with a, a typical setup here for the attackers with the IQ, Buck, uh, Thermite, and uh, the, the oddball of the group being, uh, you know, being the uh, Zofia, because you already have a Buck, they do the similar roles. So you do know that now they're going to be doing a lot of soft surface destruction, trying to get those angles to push in and make sure that they can at least push these attackers out, or these defenders out of the, uh, of the security room. As we see here, Buck is taking some shots here. I'm not too sure who did that. I'm looking at it as well. I think it was uh, a buzz here playing Mozzie, so he may yes. have just been returning far from that angle, which will make sense. But you know, defending CCTV is really difficult and somewhat dangerous. So I wouldn't be too surprised if uh, it was it's a buzz and who else is with him right now? Uh, here, uh, Skies. Both of them should be flushed out pretty easily, assuming Phoenix know what they're doing. Yes. So Skies is going to be in charge of 90 hallway, and as he has the uh, SMG 11, he's going to be able to as long as he can control that recoil. But Simba with the first kill under a buzz of Surf. So Surf goes down uh, a man on this one. Uh, did seem to lose him in oh, almost lost him, but now that uh, they're going to be slowly pushing into 90, uh, we're going to have him push into the fountain room. And as I say that, Headhunters grabs another kill. So we're down to a 5v3. Yeah, so it's kind of like this is just the defense is slowly but surely collapsing. You can see the attackers, Phoenix here, moving forward. Whoopu gets the first frag on his side, though. Uh, but yeah, looking at it, 
in, in the grand scope of things, it looks like the defense is being pushed back further and further, ever so slowly, but ever so surely, you know? It's just yes. a matter of time before the attackers, Phoenix, start actually setting foot into the OBJ, in my mind. Because both teams have shown that they're capable of getting one or two kills, but the overwhelming oh. majority comes towards the attack. As I say this, though, Sky is getting the kill. That's not going to be a 3v3 situation, bringing to the both teams back to an equi equilibrium. However, Wupu seems to be getting a lot of pressure from a few different angles. If he does not pay attention, there he gets a cut in Kryptonite. Will he get the flank? Ah. Um, Goes unpunished, able to push into 90 and take out the, uh, able to take out the IQ. So that brings us to a 3v2. As you see here, we're running down low on the clock, though with 30 seconds left. So lots of time on the clock, but they're going to be tossing some frag grenades out to get rid of it. And Skies with another kill, you know, down to a 3v1. It's just down to the buck and he's stuck here in archives. He knows there's one around him, goes for the shot, able to take down the Maestro, but does not able to get the refrag. And as we see here, the mute is able to finish him off and Surf goes up for round number one. You know what is an amazing, fortunate, yet somewhat unfortunate coincidence? I think we're both amazing play-by-play -play casters, so we're kind of like trying to... We may just end up we're not, to... Uh, we're not being egotistical at all. We're uh, amazing. <laughs> Nobody can touch us. Yeah, but I'm trying to play by play in high intensity <laughs> moments. You're trying to play by play in high intensity moments. And it's, it's if you don't pay attention... It's yes. just a fight. <laughs> but you Whoever know, it's, gets, the, gets. it's the good kind of fights. I will, I will, if you want, it's my first time here. Oh, don't, I'll, don't I'll relent, it's back. amazing. I'll don't relent. <laughs> uh, but as we see here now, a Wumai is going to come out. So they knew that, they, or as Surf knows, uh, they did very well uh, the last round, but they know now that they're going to be doing going heavy on the frags with the buck, and they had the Zofia, so now they know they need the Wumai. So a very good strategy now to kind of switch up a little bit well my also has a very good loadout uh as you see here he's going to have i can't tell what he's using as the primary uh it just says it's his pistol currently uh i can't tell if he's going to be using the auger the mp5 we are going to be seeing this in a few short meta moments. meta is the the aug granted um yeah. but me personally as a uh, as a console player i'm sorry Sorry. Uh, as a console player, I prefer the MP5 just because of the least amount of recoil. Um, but which which makes sense. Yes. So the only thing I am going to see a bit of an issue with here. Granted, they did very well last time by holding like having a lot of people on uh, objective. But now you have two operators you have to keep alive the longest to make sure that their utility is used to the fullest. So you have a yeah. lesion on skies, and then you have uh, Gab Gabhoud uh, on. Uh, 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 oh, I no, say uh, Gabu. Abu 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 yeah, Abu 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 and you know what's like so really interesting? I was kind of studying the Pro League meta uh, when I was uh, casting with somebody else, my co cast, my usual co caster analyst. And we were thinking, like, for example, Ajix here. He is playing on smoke, or you were talking about Abuzz Wamai here. He is also pretty much on the first line of defense as a roamer. So he's kind of a VIP operator, right? You nice don't want shot. to lose him too early on. Nice shot, as you said. However, if he's just sitting back, being useless, be doing next to nothing in the sole name of staying alive, it's just going to put you in an artificial 4v5 at the very beginning of the round for next to no good reason. So pro, mm. pro teams will have, for example, Maestro, uh, Smoke, like being really aggressive, which is something I didn't expect players to be. But in hindsight, it makes total sense. Just like it made sense to have a buzz with the AUG, which is... A gun that has a great uh, range for defender uh, weapons, say, um, uh, I'm looking for the correct word, um, uh, proportionally to the other defenders, right? But yes. he doesn't have the ACOG yet. He gets the first blood. Uh, Sky is helping him out, getting another kill. That's not going to be a 3v5 situation, and the roamers are still going strong. It's not looking too good for the entry here coming off of Phoenix, but nothing is now done. Nothing, it's too late. They can still bring this back. Yes, yeah, so they do have. They still have the frags of the sledge, and they do have Zofia. So, uh, having those two very powerful operators on the board still is crucial. But at the same time, the Wamai is still alive. So, uh, you have the very hard counter to both those operators. Now it's just really down to how they're going to be using them. They do know that there's somebody over here in office. So sledge is probably going to chuck a couple grenades in there. We hear one of the grenades goes in. Is able not to hit anybody. Uh, doesn't do any damage. Uh, 
Right, but he's gonna be. He has one of the. This one of the Legion mines. He gets taken out. The Womai of a Buzz is just going to town. And as we say that, the headhunter jumps in. He knows there's one over here in uh, in archives. Is able to take one out. Nice shot onto onto Sky. Is able to get rid of that Legion. He's gonna slowly push in. He knows there's one in and around. He can hear him. Not able to land the shots. And again. A buzz with the triple kill is down to a 4v1 with the uh, less than 20 health. And as I say that, the castle leaps out and takes his head clean off of Thermite. And then breaks it down to a 2 nothing for Team Surf. Quick question and be honest, did you just realize we were playing Tellers as he tried to like jump in here? Because I sure, certainly did. No, I knew they were. It's just I am I get thrown off very easily because I'm... I, I know a lot of the maps, but New England callouts are a little bit tricky, and now I have to read them all in French. Yeah, I'm gonna change that. Don't worry. Next, next <laughs> no, game, it's gonna be. Updated. It's 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 okay because it actually is makes it so it's practice. I know I know the names. I know the names of each of them. I've played this game for over four years, but at the same time, it's very different when you read it in French because you're like, as a reference, you're like, I have no idea what that says. <laughs> I don't know if you have a second monitor, but in the, in the chat, a certain somebody uh, named Mishmash is asking, is that Neil? I no. don't know. No, it's not. Me. It's his cousin, <laughs> Lean. <laughs> Lean. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that was quite surprising, to be honest, because, you know, that bombsite, Tellers, we considered a tertiary bombsite, and yet uh, Surf was able to win it out with a fairly substantial margin. You know, it yes. did not come down to the wire. Looking at it this way, you might want to argue that when they're going to be forced to go into their quote-unquote secondary bombsite, which they are going to be going right as we speak, uh, their chances of winning should be pretty high without even, like, going into the defense, the setup, or the actual execution. Yes, so the, the, the key of that last one was uh, a buzz. And yeah. they had they had zero counter from. They were pushing at him one at a time. He originally got the initial kill because they didn't drone out properly of anything by archives. So he went uncontested for the first kill. Second kill, they pushed at him again, and he was able to get somebody else. They didn't were not able to punish him when he moved because there was not enough eyes on him. And his gadget took away so much utility that there was just nothing left for them when they finally did get to him. He was able to get a triple kill and made it look so easy. And he just picked him off one by one. There wasn't any sort of pinch. There wasn't any sort of pressure on him. And so now you have Wumai again. He's going to be over here. And, but again, they don't have a proper setup for him. And they are starting to pinch him. But they do seem to be doing what they did last time is try and go in one at a time. He's gonna put grenade again, and it's not gonna work for a second time. So that's gonna be like uh, utility. Frag grenades basically lost for the attack, as nobody else but uh, Fleek has them. Uh, Abuzz, however, is not gonna keep on holding on to the line. He just uh, drops out, uh, drops to the hatch, and now he has the good potential for a potential realm, which will absolutely work. He gets the frag on base here. Basic, how should I say? The hatch, however, the drop is being watched. He will be taking a lot of damage. Still going strong. He's still alive. And his position is more or less known, so not too much is going into his favor, but he was able to elude the attackers. His position is now unknown, and he's basically going to become a faceless roamer, which you will have to just keep an eye out for. And here, the roaming, however, is not yet done. However, Fleet gets the final kill on Wopu, so now that's going to be any and all roaming capability eliminated, but for Abbas, who already crawled back up the stairs. So he's once again holding the angle. Top fragger for his team. He'll be biting the dust, though, and looking at what he did last round, that single kill might just bring the, the Phoenix over the edge and make them able to win that round. Yes, Phoenix uh, finally able to take him out, but at the cost of potentially so much utility. But at the same time, you still have the Sledge who's able to open up the ceiling as he's doing now. And you do have a Capital, obviously is now affected by Wumai, and he's still on the board. So, with 50 seconds left and you're up about up 4-2 to two in Operators-wise, uh, it is still looking good for Phoenix. We will have the IQ. She's going to be jumping down, trying to push probably uh, through main door. And as we say that, the smoke makes a very unusually aggressive play. So just it's just down to Gabhouse, Gab, Gabhoud of the Maestro. And he is going to be in a very tricky situation. He's got a lot of eyes that are going to be pushing on him, but he, he's going to be rotating over here into bathroom. 26 seconds left, though. They did finally drone him out, so they know he's going to be stuck in bathroom. It's going to be an all-out war trying to get him out of there, though, with that Alda. They probably are going to most likely plant, trying to lure him out. 
13 seconds so left though he's trying to hit that drone it's so elusive plant is going down on b site though and as we see here he's going to be pushing out there will most likely be a gun on him sludge up top he does miss that though he does that and as, as i say that he gets his head taken off flaky finally bring it up for team phoenix yeah, that just proved to be too much. You know, if somebody was going to be able to do it, it was going to be Maestro. So with the uh, evil eye, with a lucky evil eye placement, he might have, have been able to, like, deny the plan of the diffuser. Or, fitting that with his 80 bullet mag, he could have done something interesting. Sorry, could have done something interesting. But, you know, if your head gets popped off, no matter how many bullets you have in your mag, it's not going to be worth anything. Mm -hmm. And that is a very difficult site to hold for that reason. That's why it's generally something that, that teams put off till the end um, as something to get out of the way, right? Like if you win it, awesome. If you don't, it's that's 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 the most teams go in knowing that that's the round that they're going to lose. They they do their best to try and make it win, but they know, OK, this is this is the one we're the weakest on. We're going to push it off. It's going to go off. We're not going to go to it first. We're going to go to it like maybe the second to last. So now it could be that Surf is going to be going onto another site that they're familiar with and had luck with. And now it will be, again, another uphill battle for Phoenix. And as we say that, yes, they are going back upstairs. They're going to go into armories, as they wish they had lots of luck with them last time because uh, they had a solid control of 90. They had solid control of security, and they're just Team Phoenix did not have an answer for any of them. And they're running the exact same setup as they did the first round. Not exactly, though. I hate to, con to contradict you, but Mozzie is going to be absent. I believe. Oh yeah, sorry, Mozzie is gone. Sorry, Mozzie's gone in place of a Valkyrie. Oh, uh, Valkyrie, yeah. Yes. So, all in all, I kind of feel like operators are kind of stacked uh, on top of each other. For example, if you look at Intel operators, you have both a buzz with the Valkyrie and uh, Whoopal with the Evil Eyes, both cameras in their own right, you know, Intel type operators. And you have a few, um, well, plant denial operators. Gabud playing on uh, Goyo, Wupu uh, uh, with Maestro, and finally uh, Jakes with Smoke. So there's a lot of overlap. It kind of feels to me as if they're heavily hedging their bets on the potential deny of a plant. Does that kind of imply that Surf think they're not going to be able to hold off the pressure and that Phoenix are eventually going to find their way into the objective? It is a very well, it's inevitable that they're going to be getting into objective. With how Armory's set up, as soon as that wall's open, you, you lose control of half the site. So they do know that they do know that they are going to be losing control it's just a matter of when as you see here they're using like you said they're losing a lot of area denial operators so i i would agree with you yes they are most likely doing that and that was probably a missed shot by valkyrie so that is one Bravo. of the goyo charges gone and with goyo being absent abla is obviously not playing him this round as he's on valkyrie well he's going to be vulnerable to, to frag grenades uh fleeky is able to inflict him a bit of damage will be refragged immediately base getting a kill that natural cell is bound to get the frag there we go down to a 3v4 already however the control of cctv is not yet lost that's gonna be thermite lost great utility off the board on his left side however there's a silhouette not sure exactly who that was and want to change uh povs by fear of missing out but there we go kryptonic now <laughs> jumping in but that just proved to be a mistake 2v2 already and not even the half of the round played yes so this one is one of those rounds that's going by a mile a minute as you can see here though it's just down to Wupu and Ajax or Ajax or AJ how do you say that name <laughs> Ajax that, that is, Ajax so I'm just gonna go Ajax it's really weird to see when it's like that but yes it is just down to Wupu and uh, Ajax and we do have though we have a uh Capital on the board very powerful operator in a situation like this. You can get off denial of any sort of rotation, so therefore you can push into the uh, objective as quickly as possible. As we hear, the Alda is going to be over here in offices, and that's going to be a tough one to push. He is managing to make his way in, though. He's going to go for the kit. Oh, he has to push his back at the last second here. He's going to throw his impacts out, try and do a little bit of damage. Grimlock is trying to push him out of there with her uh, stingers, and she does manage to make it a little bit difficult, but she does take a lot of damage in the pre in the meantime it is down to smoke though with 30 seconds left he can it single-handedly cut off this entire round and make it so they the uh defenders can't even push into sight with as low as health as they have they're going to be down a man no matter what Absolutely, with now 20 seconds remaining and two toxic babes still in his back pocket, that's looking pretty grim for Phoenix. They yet have to try, so it's basically gonna go down to the cover that base here is is providing. As obviously Ajax will try to deny the plant of the diffuser. Stop stopping He'll the plant. He, he's not, so that's not gonna be a 1v2 situation. He rushes oh. in, gets picked up. What? Be Phoenix. Um, that was a misplay. That was a misplay. So, what he could have done, he still had one toxic fig left. 
and the smoke grenade was totally obstructing any of the view. What he could have done there is blow off another section of that wall, chuck a uh, gas grenade in, knowing yes. roughly really where there's a default plant spot. It's always right. going to be default plant. You throw your smoke grenade in, therefore you don't have to wait. As you see there, he threw it at the wall and detonated it. So they knew exactly where he was. They knew he was not in the room with them because the smoke grenade was there. So they were probably playing a little bit of guessing game at that point. But as soon as they see the, the smoke grenade go off in the other room, then they know, okay, he hasn't entered yet. So we're good. Um, so a little bit of a misplay there by the smoke. Yeah. Of Ajax. So Gridlock was Gridlock planting? I believe she was. No, Gridlock was uh, not. No, planting. no, Gridlock was not planting. Capital was planting. Gridlock yeah. was just holding angle, but Gridlock had the lowest amount of health. That's Absolutely. probably why she was not playing. That's why she was not planting, because they knew right. it was a smoke, and if any a little bit of smoke touched her, she was done. So therefore, he could have sat in the smoke and almost got his plant down. But I still think if if he blew that wall open that he's blowing open right now a little bit more throwing the gas grenade as far as he could just throw it straight you're gonna get you're gonna hit the wall behind the guy and you're gonna be able to detonate it and it's gonna just cut off that plant because then he has to get up and move and therefore you win the round absolutely so you know that's kind of the thing if you had the smoke at the right place at the right moment say in the doorway uh it could have basically denied entry to bisque like once again you know the capital could have just bullied through could have planted against all odds but then without a proper cover he would not have been able to able to plant uh had his head been in the smoke or not you know yes so a little bit of a misplay there but let's see if they can recover but now it's a tied game surf and phoenix are neck and neck like you said these are going to be some even games it's going to be who downs who makes the most mistakes and uh hopefully Surf oh, no. <laughs> speaking of easy mistakes i don't think that's going to come back to bite them but you know speaking of mistakes no it's probably not it's it's more or less it'd be different if they were having a rough go and and, and they, they seem to be kind of on the uh, the pickup there that's only going to take away 10 seconds out of uh, a setup that is is not really it's not going to really affect the setup at all at that point indeed so, so we will if have uh yeah, Cap or, oh, yeah we will have kryptonite uh, going to be droning into archives again they will be holding up top here so she's just going to make sure that there's no utility that she might have to get rid of from the floor beneath or if she can take it out from uh, where she's at she'll be more than okay so as i could see here wupu is bound to get pressure from a few different angles on his left side obviously there's going to be kryptonite who was droning till now as this drone appears to have been destroyed and on the right side there's going to be office office plus the office window uh, as such, Wupu is kind of forced to juggle a few different lines, so he's going back and forth, but with bad timing or just proper coordination off of uh, coming off of Phoenix, he could be done for. As we see here, he's already trading fire with Bisk, or uh, yeah, Basic, sorry, who neither lands a shot, but still, you know, the attackers now have, have a foothold into office. Are they going to be able to pr to get any further, or is just Wupu going to get the kills? That's basically the next question that could have repercussions and could influence the rest of the round. Yes, yeah, so no, now generally you see a, uh, oh, unfortunately he's going to go and down the uh, the mute of Skies and unfortunately there's no repercussion. Rupu also gets taken out, so that's the Maestro gone. And as I say that, Skies gets taken out by a frag grenade, so two very quick frags. One operator being a little bit more uh, influential than the other, and as I say, a buzz gets ripped apart as well. So just down to a 2v5. Things are not looking good right now for Surf. Because they're pushing it, they're slowly pushing it into the objective, and Headhunters takes out Gab out. And he does manage to down. get it down, though. He does manage to get down the uh, the Capital. He's going to finish off the kill, but he's still got four to go through. And all he has is that SMG 11 and a Dream Plant is down, though. In this uh, retake situation, but there's somebody watching the door. They knew exactly where he was. Kryptonite finishing off Ajax. That angle was obviously going to be watched like a hawk. It wasn't a 1v4 situation. His position known. He was not being actively rushed simply because Phoenix were planting. Other than that, there was absolutely nothing going for him. And as soon as he peeked, it was a death sentence just in waiting. And that's exactly what happened. From that point on, there was just no coming back, to be honest. Now, now it was weird because the, the, the Maestro wasn't holding Fountain, which is a more common hold. Granted, you generally need something like a Val or a uh, Mira for that, but you can do it just with your evil eyes. Um, but um, oddly enough, he was just holding archives, which really cuts off a lot of uh, a lot of your potential to really hold off and delay as much as possible. Because 
the all, weird thing about Maestro, granted he's a very good anchor, but he the amount of push uh, potential he denies, uh, and having him confined to that one room, you've literally given them all of Fountain just as free reign. And that's a lot of area, but considering that is a crucial focal point for a lot of your team to rotate through. As we saw, we saw, I believe it was uh, Skies in uh, 90. That's that's his rotation hole in. If you give them that, there's he's stuck at 90. He cannot go anywhere. Um, so having him Maestro locked in archives was a little bit odd. Uh, hopefully they, they, they kind of adjust as they go along. Um, and, and don't make these little mistakes, these little issues that are kind of uh, causing them to lose their lead now. Indeed. So the one thing I want to kind of point out or take uh, a special attention towards is we're going to go tellers again. Um, my same supposition, I kind of thought it was because they wanted to just throw off Phoenix. So Phoenix, we're going to supposedly assume that the secondary bomb site is going to be um, Workshop. They're going to set up a, a composition to attack Workshop and then it just turns out it's not the case, right? But yeah. seeing as we're going there a second time in a row, apparently uh, this time my, my guess would be simply that Taylor's is their legit secondary bomb site. For better or for worse, we are going there again and this time the advantage of surprise has been lost. Yeah. Now, uh, te it, Taylor's is a really... I find a lot of teams are starting to get used to it because of the... Granted, it does have an open wall. Oh my goodness, when Y gets his head taken clean off by headhunters. So again, that's a lot of that utility gone. They do not have to worry about these frag grenades getting taken out. Maybe there might be one already there. Legion also peeks his head out. That's another operator that you need to keep alive is now off the board. You do have somebody... One more person just keeping an eye on, uh, on archives. You have your castle upstairs. But he does have a couple guns on him. Just misses the head of the IQ. IQ knows where he is now. He doesn't seem to get out of the way. He knows that there's somebody around there. Wupu, though, able to take out Fleeky. He and is open to a wall bank. His position is known. He's behind a soft wall. Yeah, it's uh, not too sure why shot prefires aren't coming out. You know he's there. You heard some shots go off. But you maybe could be uh, just her taking precaution at this point, trying not to give away a position too much. He, he knows that she was around there, but he doesn't know if he's still in the room. Might be a bit too early for that, but he's also maybe just playing for time. Uh, so yep. in the meantime, speaking of it, uh, speaking of which, uh, so we had, oh, and there goes the kill. Uh, we had Buck that kind of died to an Nitro Cell, uh, stuck to the ceiling, and that was a big piece of utility loss. You know, the skeleton key. Uh, yes. Still, we do have, I believe, yeah, IQ here playing with the uh, breaching charges, so that's going to push Ajix out, and he's going to get down in the uh, mid-vault. Wopu now, basically a 1v4 situation. He might even be the one who got the natural cell kill, basically putting, putting him in uh, at odds of getting the ace. But no, it's not going to happen. Phoenix, now that was our sixth round. Roll swap is going to happen right now. And we're going to be swapping rolls with the 42 scoreline in advantage of Phoenix. Yes, yeah, so now Surf can still bring this back. They aren't out yet. Um, generally, we see a little bit of resurgence with these teams, especially when they come back from the de defense. Uh, some teams are just more comfortable on attack. I know I'm much more comfortable playing an attacking role than I am a def def uh, defending role. Um, so at this point, it's still anybody's game, but it, it does look like Phoenix is kind of having uh, having their way a little bit with Surf. They're, they're kind of having... <laughs> at first, they didn't seem to have a counter for the Wumai pick, and, and they just seemed to have some sloppy uh, sloppy entries. And, and at you know after that uh, third round, they just kind of... Turned it around and said, "Yeah, no, you guys, are, you guys have gone far enough. You got two, you got two rounds. That's all you're getting. Um, so it'll be <laughs> interesting enough. now. That's enough. You've had your fun. Uh, so we'll see if they can keep up this momentum while they're now on uh, defense. So one thing I really like to point out whenever there's a roll swap is basically now we've seen how uh, how uh, surf defends. Let's see how Phoenix does this. For example, are we seeing any operators that surfed in front of the table that yes. might bring a breath of new, a fresh air? You know, right now that we're we, hitting the we, mid uh, point. Yeah, and we see a ahead, bandit Phoenix come out. One. Yeah, Absolutely. we see a bandit come out. So that is again entry denial. Just so that they just have to worry a little bit more now. Uh, you're you're focusing the attackers to go somewhere 
different, right? So you're going to have the Buck or the Zafia going downstairs, trying to open up that floor, so therefore they can take care of the bandit charges. Well, if you have a gun down there waiting for them, that's just, you know, one extra thing that the attackers need to do before Speaking they attack which, site. <laughs> Speaking of which, Speaking both of Simba death. and Basic seem to be setting up. So, you know, uh, goo mines obviously are uh, more uh, telltale of a hankered down defense rather than an active flanking style roam, you know? Yeah. Uh, however, with uh, you look at the composition, basically everybody on the attacking side except for Thermite himself are in a position to open up the bad batteries from down there. You know, so if you throw enough bodies at the problem, the attackers are at odds of getting the wall open. To me, it's not too much of a, of, of a question. You know, Sophia yeah. impact mate, Ajax shotgun, Skies shotgun, Abaz he can pinpoint with the. Um, with this gadget, but you know, still, and it's not gonna be played from the outside. We're already basically knocking at the door here, and apparently, Sky's is looking to cook one or two grenades. But Nitro Cells are going to mute us on the other side. Neither gadget's getting the kill, but Headhunter is losing around half his health. Sky is now looking to finish the game, and that's gonna be it. But due to the gunfight, both teams losing a player, but you know, the only last one remaining on bomb side. Whose silhouette is that? That's gonna be uh, Fleeky here on Maestro. If he's out with a bit of smoke, you could even try to plant the diffuser really quickly here. Yeah, so the ultimate counter to that strategy they were just talking about before, just push B. As you said, Fleeky is gonna take out Skies with the Aldo, take his head clean off, and it brings us down to a 3v3. And he's able to take out another one through the bomb. Nice shooting here. He's able to push through, but that gun that pokes through the doorway, able to get his head, able to go for the refrag down to a 2v2. Wupu on a little bit of a roll now. Ajax, though, is going to be going to slowly push into sight. He's able to cut off any sort of push to stop the plant. Uh, as we see here, though, Mozzie's going to start and take out a couple of those uh, track stingers. And Smokes and C4 go out. So it is literally down to Ajax at this point. And it's going to be a tough uphill battle. He has to get the plant down or he's go for the frags. But with a minute left, he has lots of time to slowly take out these defenders. But it has been a pretty fast-paced game so far. He's apparently going to go for the plant. And he's not going to plant a default. So Kryptonite might be tempted to toss his natural cell. His, or his toxic babe, sorry. And he's gonna not going to do so. Not going to bait out or not going to... You know, um, fall for the bait, should I say. Nonetheless, Simba here with the flank is going to get the easy kill. He was alone, so he couldn't be covered in any way whatsoever when he was nope. planting in a 1v2 situation. That was just too much to ask for. Yeah, the track stingers only do so much. They only slow them down. You can easily get rid of them. So the, in a 1v2 situation, it's one of those things where it's it's kind of irrelevant to have drag stingers. It just lets you know that somebody's coming up to shoot you in the back. Um... But yeah, that was it was it was a good idea though. Um, it was a good try. She you know went to away from default plant, but uh, as she was so close to the wall, they heard her kind of typing away on that uh, lunchbox, so they knew exactly where she was. But good effort, nonetheless. And it brings to absolutely. Uh, looking at it right now, you know the current landscape is a five to two situation with Phoenix now defending. So Phoenix arguably being on the easy, easier side. Uh, we might be looking at a really swift ending, you know, two rounds and it's done, basically. Surf had had, or have had, sorry, a, an uphill battle even when they were defending, so an, an attack now. It's looking pretty grim it, for them, as it, that last round they showed do, us, right? I will say, though, they do look a little bit better than they did on defense. Granted, they didn't win that last round, but they did. They got the refrags. They uh, had a very quick push in. Uh, they just didn't win a little bit of... The, they didn't win all the gunfights. They did uh, lose a couple of the gunfights to the Alda of the Maestro, which, again, it's a very difficult gun to win your gunfights against. Um, but again, it did look a little promising, so I wouldn't count them out just yet. They might get another round or two, and hopefully they can start building a little bit of momentum off of that. But we Absolutely. will see a Kaid come in now. Fleeky's going to flip over to the Kaid now that he is on the, uh, they are downstairs. Again, another operator that's coming in here, bringing a little bit more, uh, life into the, uh, roles, uh, that they are being picked. And it does look like Surf is going to stick to the exact same uh, as they did last time. A buzz here with the entry fight getting the first kill on uh, Bandit already. There's also another threat up top. I believe it is Valkyrie. Indeed, it is. Uh, Basic here is obviously going to know that his uh, opponents are going to be coming in. The drone hover did not spot him. That drone did not see him. Once again, fails they to see him, and a buzz is going to pay the price for that. Buck was looking at the, at the floor be between his feet, basically. With the gun down, he could have been an easy pick. However, that drone now is going to uh, take the intel. He's just tossing to see if somebody comes up from behind him, telling his dead teammates to keep an eye out. 
But for right now, he's not being too much of a nuisance. You know, there's nothing directly preventing Buck from just keeping oh. on playing the verticality. And that's going to be a lucky wall bank coming off of Sky. He's going to the kill. Now a 3 2 v Four situation already. Wow, that's like really good for surf. That that is very good for surf. Going, go, being very very aggressive. They knew that they had they had a good idea last time. They're just implementing it a lot better this time. Buck's still alive. Going to open up that floor, try and get some sight lines. We're going to push the Kaid over here by the construction table. And as I said, they open up hatches. So push is getting ready to come in, and it does looking it is looking quite grim right now for Phoenix. But we still have the smoke over here in bathroom, so they can uh, cut off a little bit of the push for a time being. Not able to take out that drone. The drone's going to be sweeping and clearing most of that. But I will notice, I will notice though, that, uh, again, a lot better proficient gunplay coming out from Surf. They're, uh, they're hitting their shots. They're, they're able to quickly move in. Granted, that was a little bit of a misplay with the drone, uh, but he is able to... Uh, Swiftly come back as I said, that skies is able to take a fleeking is literally just down to the uh, Smoke now he's going to push over here through luggage hold Kind of a lost battle at this cause so he's just playing for time He's going to try and waste as much time wait for that plant and see if he can cut them off So therefore uh, put him in a little bit of a panic situation if you take out the diffuser Unfortunately, the diffuser though, castle is... did lock him out yeah, Diffuser is being, is being planted, is actually planted at this point. He's going for the top push, so obviously he cannot realistically pretend to try to defuse the Diffuser when there's people at the top floor. But at the same time, if you go at the top floor, you're not going to get the Diffuser destroyed, you know? So running mm -hmm. up was kind of a gamble. It did help him with his gunfights, but that was not enough. He was in a 1v4 situation, and he ended up being, paying the price for it. Obviously, as you said, one, yeah. 2v4, now 1v4, Diffuser planted. It was an extremely uphill battle. And the result is, to be honest, the result that we expected at this point. Yeah, and then that one, that one v four would have been pretty much impossible, anyways. Uh, you had people watching people watching people. Um, you know, we, as we saw there, the buck was watching the gridlock, and, and the gridlock was watching the hallway. So as soon as he saw somebody die from hallway, he knew that the uh, smoke yeah. was going to be pushing in through there. So a very difficult situation for that, but um, a good job on surf. Again, I like what they did. They looked very good the first time, weren't able to fully execute. Now they moved on to this one. And uh, again, they did the exact same thing as they did last time. Very quick gunplay, very uh, aggressive push. And then it, it just threw it, uh, Phoenix off enough uh, that they were able to get the plant off and, and win that situation. But this is here. No, we see a pulse. So they're going to go down to the bottom floor again. They know now that it's Surf is going to be pushing up top a little bit more. Uh, so having the pulse on there is going to make the attackers a little bit more cautious of where they're going to be stepping, especially with him having the C4. And I'm, I'm not too sure. Is he running a shotgun? I can't tell. I don't think I would be surprised. I, probably, if, I wouldn't be. Please. I would be surprised if he is. Usually the UMP is is the go-to, but it's some. I know there are some people out there who do run, you know, uh, pulse with that shotgun for the exact reason is you don't have to really be as accurate when you know somebody's around there. You just have to start blasting the floor at that point, right? So, right, uh, true. It, it is. It, it's a gamble. Uh, you know, trade off for the damage and whatnot. Absolutely. He does run the shotgun. So oh, the thing does. is, okay. however, yeah, he does. Um, the thing is, he's going to be limited in uh, in terms of movement so much. Any and all open area, open um, space in the map is going to be a death trap for him. You know, he cannot run up the, the main corridors at the, at the second floor. But he doesn't he have to. to. He doesn't have to, right. But he's kind of limited to, uh, to playing the verticality or just picking hard angles by the doorways, which yeah. is going to be a... Greatly limiting factor oh, as he's taking a lot of damage, but <laughs> looking on the flip side, he now knows where the pressure is going to be coming from. Yeah, yeah, they did. I think they pushed in through jail. Uh, it doesn't and that's already that's in. Guys is already in. He, he could be planting right now. He could be. He takes out the pulse though, and you know, he's just going to watch bathroom. He knows there's not able to see the feet. Is able to take out kryptonite and just like that, surf. Or, uh, Phoenix is, uh, yeah, surf is collapsing, and there's another one down. Uh, that is the castle gone, a, a buzz, and, and now uh, it does seem like they're in a bit of a panic. They're not too sure of what to do. The plant is going down, and finally does go down on the uh, A bomb. They know one is upstairs, and right now it's just hold your angles, hold your doorways, and uh, watch the def defenders fall. This is a very tough retake. It's certain both defenders are off site. But and as the headhunters does take out Wupu, and it's just a gunfight now between the MPX and it looks like a uh, uh, it was the uh, thermite of that. But as I said, Buzz takes out headhunters, and it is just a one v four. It's a pretty well. It's, it's uh, undoable. Yeah, it's undoable. Six seconds to get to the diffuser. It's done. 
And just like that, Surf brings up another round. And it does look like you're now on a little bit of a tear on the attacking side. Now, here's a here's a question. It would be fairly, uh, say, standardly accepted that this map is favoring the defense, right? Defending is easier than attacking on border. But we've seen so far basically both teams bringing it up on the attacking side. Why do you think that is? Are the bands favoring disagree. the attack? I would, I would, I would disagree with saying it's easier to defend on border. I think it's a little bit easier to attack on border. I think the bands are affecting it. Obviously, not having that Mira, big thing. Not oh, having yeah. that Jaeger is a huge thing. Um, but not having a Thatcher just makes it. I, th I feel, uh, granted that that puts it in def the defensive favor. Just not having that Thatcher. Um, I would say it's a little bit easier to attack just because of the I amount of soft walls. As we saw there, the pulse was on site behind a door, uh, well into sight, and he was getting shot through a soft wall. So it was one of. I, I, I think the only contributing factor at this point is the Thatcher ban. That's what's making it that they can push in aggressive. They can put they, they they're pushing it aggressively. Granted, you know how you now uh, have a lesion. You have all these other things, but they're pushing it aggressive before they knew the strategy. And, and I feel like defense has the better side now. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't. I would not say it's it's uh, defense. It's easier for defense usually. Yeah, so blanket statements, do have to be careful about those. Um, all in all, so we could say that this game, at the very least, kind of favors the attack. Yes. Um, what is Kade doing here? Like, that's so kind of he... the kind of openings that you would expect, uh, usually expect Buck to be making, right? Yeah, so yeah, he's doing that. So as you see there, he just threw his Electro Claw. So now that that's underneath, it's they have to go downstairs to shoot that Electro Claw. They can't just try and find an angle and then get rid of it. He gets his head taken off by a Buzz who is waiting for him. And it's just Wuku with another shot. And oh my goodness, he gets his way with his life. Mozzie not able to finish off that, uh, that Roni only with the 20 rounds is kind of letting him down a little bit. But a Buzz does have a little bit over 20 health at this point. So he is probably one shot. Uh, yes. Now Mozzie is stuck here in construction. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the bad news. Phoenix, on their defense, they hedged a lot of their bets on holding the bottom floor, as you said, because of that placement of the Electro Claw. But they've already lost two roamers uh, by D, and in exchange, they dealt next to nothing in return. You know, they, a few attackers have lost a bit of health, but nobody's down so far. And oh, Senbai is now basically gone. in 1v... 2v3. How many attackers uh, Surf want to, want to throw at Simba? He's going to be in a 1vx situation here. His position, I don't know if the attackers have forgotten about him because he <laughs> they have just not reacted to his presence, whereas they should have known he was there, however. Nonetheless, he is I believe already Kryptonite was looking for him. She just didn't know exactly. Like, he knew he was in around this area. He, I think he was on the hunt. But now they know where he's at. Yeah, and he's last operator alive. He has absolutely no control whatsoever on either of both, of both objectives. Gets a double kill though, diffuser plant in the meantime. And you know, he's underneath. He's not gonna do much. He has to climb back the stairs, and that's gonna be extremely predictable on his right side. Oh, what? He does not realize that this was the feat of Buck. He did not realize he that, that Sky's. He didn't he? He probably did. His feet were, pe were poking out. Oh, uh, that's embarrassing. Oh, no. It was a free kill. It's, it's, it is hard in those situations to really get True. like to know Absolutely. what if that's a body you lose track of who's down who's been dead um so again it's tough to, we see the outlines they don't they don't um, yeah, it's, it's so easy to criticize them it's easy, it's easy to criticize but at the same time no yeah you should know uh your team you know somebody is roughly in, in 90 or or things like that he it's kind of known just to kind of pre peek them he kind of just totally ignored 90 and try to push into objectives. So uh, he, he did look at it, he just didn't realize. So here's just the thing, be it an anecdote or an actual criticism, that was a free kill that he just missed out on for no good yes, reason. Yes, 100%. And again, that's that's what I mean by these little mistakes. Little mistakes. Yeah, that you they could go argue cost way. him the round because you know he was still fighting an uphill battle. But you know, save the op, get the KD up, that kind of stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly, right? You never know. That one kill could have cleared 90. He could have rotated into 90, and then they would have not known. And again, it opens up a lot of what ifs in the, in the scenario. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, what if he killed the buck and pushed into 90? What if he was able to get the other frag, brought it down to a 2v1? That makes, you know, maybe somebody rotate into the fountain and he's able to get that kill. So it's just a, 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 the butterfly effect. You may get one kill, it could equal out to be three more kills uh, just because it pulls people out of position. But we do, we'll, we'll be going back up to Armory and we got the bandit again once and he's going to be uh, in charge of the office area or the open area of uh, Fountain. Make sure that uh, he gets, uh, put, at this point, bandit is just a uh, delaying time. Get rid of it and you have to cut off the announcer uh, because you won't hear a single thing if you do. Absolutely, that's gonna with the crutch plays, you know, crutch things that you absolutely have to do no matter what. Uh, but yeah, both teams are now back up at equilibrium. The scoreboard is now back to 5-5. Five five. Uh, we might even see an overtime situation. It's right. looking somewhat likely at this point. Yep, it does look... It, it is looking likely. Uh, we might see an overtime, but at the same time, Surf might... Or Phoenix, yeah, Surf might close it out with just the attacking rounds. <laughs> oh! And as I say that, though, Phoenix it punishes two of them. Uh, not... Uh, not checking those angles, yeah. not droning out of who is where. So. That grenade could have been really interesting, but it was just poorly placed. Like, who is going to be uh, camping out right in the middle of the opening? Uh, exactly. They haven't drone, done that yet either. Time. So, why would, like, out of all the times they've pushed this site, they haven't done that once. So now that it's like, oh, well, well, we didn't drone this out and we died here. So now we have to redrone this again to make sure it doesn't happen again in another round. So it just adds that little bit of the layers of, oh man, there's yeah. definitely somebody around here. It's just, it's, it kind of comes down to lack of intel, you know, and it's kind of, I don't want to say frustrating or including, but it's kind of disappointing, you know? It's so easy just to drone out to tell a boss where to toss us in the head because that was some good piece of utility basically wasted. However, the push into office is going to resume and limited in third person. Basic is the only one that can actually, uh, well, contest it really quickly and he seems really content on playing it passively. Ajax, I mean, <laughs> Both players on the top floor are going to be wiped out. A buzz now in a 1v4 situation, all or nothing. Will he get that? Looking unlikely, his position is not known, he has all of his health. But the good news kind of stopped there, doesn't it? It does. And Basic is still... Basic literally, as you flip the camera, got rid of that Cap yeah. Tao who was slowly pushing in. And as I said, though, Basic gets a little bit aggressive and uh, gets Claymored. So uh, we will have the buck here pushing 90. He's trying to lure out this smoke. Uh, trying to get him to push that 90, but he does have a SMG 11 pointing down at his face. Not able to land the, too many shots though. Recoil is going to stop him from getting a kill on Buck. He's going to push in, but the Legion Mine uh, makes it so his presence is now known. And now uh, with 27 seconds left, it is an uphill battle. And he gets two more Legion Mines. Oh my goodness. The good news uh, is, with the new patch, he's not losing any health because he's taking nope. the goo mines out so quickly. But still, it's proving quite annoying, wasting time, uh, making his presence known. And now with 13 seconds remaining, he's gotten only one kill that, oh, out of the four that, that he needed. He's never going pl to plant the diffuser, so he has five seconds now to get three kills. That's looking increasingly unlikely. Yeah, and he's just going to push in at that point and see if he can get a take out a body or two. But unfortunately, Kryptonite was waiting right there with the SMG-11, and as you can see... Easily dispatches of the buck. Indeed. Uh, so I think I'll have to let you cast for, say, 30 seconds. Uh, le reading the chat, I'm kind of uh, implying, or it kind of implies, or I'm kind of extrapolating that one game is finished and they just need to set up the next game. You know, with the, yeah, no problem. The but we usually do. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. I'm uh, letting you cast this. Oh boy, here we go. Okay. So, what do we got here? We have some Kaid, we have Kaid, Bandit, Smoke, Valkyrie. Pretty standard. This is these are the exact same things we've been seeing them pull uh, for the last little bit. And we're gonna be six picking over to the pulse again. Not surprised they have been uh, uh, kind of reliance on the smoke or on the pulse, just making sure that they know exactly where everybody's at. Not hasn't haven't been utilizing them to the best ability though. So uh, we'll have to see how this goes. Uh, we do have uh, surf now up again. Uh, they or uh, down now. The they are. Uh, losing at six to five but we will be going down okay by construction so we're going to be attempting this again last time we were here it was a very very quick push uh by surf and they were able to kind of throw off phoenix a little bit 
just by just winning those gunfights, just being super aggressive, super quick. So we're going to see if they do the same thing. Uh, having the pulse kind of maybe keep him in objective, because last time, as we know, he lost a lot of his health just kind of peeking out. He's not uh, playing the, uh, the shotgun this time, though, so I wouldn't expect him to be hankering down on LBJ too much. You know, Pulse is typically considered a roaming operator, and he's yeah. not going to be at the disadvantage of having next to no range. However, his movements do not imply that he's planning on roaming, so maybe he's still going to be well, playing they, the verticality. They, they, yeah, he did this last time. Uh, as we know, he got uh, shot up a little bit and died almost immediately, uh, so he wasn't really utilized to the best of the ability uh, the first time. So and and from my understanding, especially if you're going to be running the shotgun, you're not you're not roaming too too much. You're not. Oh, no, but roaming implies that you can de definitely win some long range battles, and unfortunately he's not able to. And as I said, almost able to take out the IQ. The IQ knew that she almost lost her life there. Uh, almost did. She's under under 50 health at this point. Uh, but good job on headhunters to kind of quickly read the situation, do a good bit of pre fire, and uh, roam back to objective. So they have an extra body here now, and they do know that. Uh, Surf is quite aggressive when it comes to the push on this site. Here's the thing, however, with headhunters playing aggressively and then jumping down the stairs, that means nobody's at the top floor anymore. So uh, a buzz here can open up the floor uncontested, basically, and that may just lead to one or two lucky kills. And he's not going to be alone. You know, Ajax also does have the shotgun. He, he's going to have to reload quite often. But, you know, still, the fragging capabilities are absolutely present and they're uncontested. That's like the big thing here. Kryptonite gets a kill at the very same moment as Fleeky bites the dust due to Skies. Uh, but slowly but surely, the pressure is mounting on the OBJ. That's absolutely certain. I believe Fleekly just got shot in the face by the IQ because he was using his scanner. Oh, did he? Oh, that's I, unfortunate. If I'm not mistaken, I think that just happened. But as I say that, though, uh, Gab House is able to take out Basic uh, from the top floor. Oh, open up those hatches. Now things are starting to fall apart for the defense. But Headhunters is going to go back upstairs. Uh, but he does have a few more bodies upstairs. Uh, able to take up the IQ and he's going to fall back. So again, you get that frag, taking out a couple guns, and he's going to move back. So playing very smart at this point. And Headhunters is going to might be the clutch player in this particular round. Just able to throw off the defense. Because now they know he's going to be roaming about. And he's going to be rotating back and forth. And as I said, though, uh, Castle with his classic war cry is going to roam back upstairs. Gap House going to <laughs> the plant, though. Oh, the and shotgun oh, poking oh, out, that's oh, going to be no. fatal. Kryptonite getting, uh, getting a little bit overzealous with the shotgun, pokes it through the hole, and they know where it is, and Wupu is able to take out Simba, and it's literally just down to head, headhunters. He can clutch it, though. It is a difficult situation, but uh, unfortunately, that castle making it quite difficult for him, as well as the gridlock. He does not lose one upstairs, going for the shot, and able to, not able to finish him off. He's going to rotate upstairs, but as I say that, kept out ropes downstairs. So... Uh, at this point, 17 seconds left, though, and he's running out of time. He does have to make a very uh, instinctive play at this point. He's going to run outside. They know where he's at. Plays go out. He is able to take out one, though. He's going to push in, but five seconds left. At this point, they know where he's at. Take him out quickly, and Surf is able to finally finish him off. And Gab House with the final kill. Whoa, a little bit of voice crack there. Oh, my goodness. But the final kill. <laughs> So here's the thing, that's not going to be an overtime situation. He had to do the, to do the 1v3 if he got the clutch. It would have yes. been GG game over. But, you know, it kind of seems as if Surf were acutely aware of that uh, situation or predicament they were in. And as such, they made sure to commit absolutely no mistake whatsoever, putting us back into a basically 50-50 percent -50 chance of winning type of situation. Both teams are now at odds of winning. And I couldn't tell you who's going to uh, take the cake here. Yeah, it is difficult. Uh, they, although Simba now bringing out the dock. So <laughs> planning on kind of, they know Surf is going to be the aggressive gunplay. Uh, uh, looking at uh, the bomb sites here, it does seem like they're they need a little bit more of a tanky operator on objective. Just they have a little bit too much roaming potential or roaming power. Uh, now Simba is just going to be doing the clutch play in this uh, last round situation. So. Going upstairs to Armory though, so have they're most likely going to have the uh, doc over here in 90 and making sure keeping him in uh, security. So that's going to be his main job. Is going to be in there. Same thing with Fleeky. Fleeky is probably going to be with him. I don't know who's going to be in what area. Uh, but at this point, you're going to have two of the chunkiest operators. They're going to be in charge of the most critical area. 
you're gonna if you and a doc and a maestro you working together is a super dangerous combo because at that point you almost have a, a 200 health uh maestro with an all the that is they can just shoot scary. up bullets absolutely and doc can keep healing them they can just keep on going and they can fire at you and you have the ACOG too right right so there's next to nothing short of a basic headshot that could take him out Will they be by CCTV, however? Fleek is still planning down in Eagle Eye, and he is going to be in the 90s hallway. So, yeah, by extension, there is no rotation, but, you know, the, the point or the, the general idea still stands for that. Not for Fleeky, though. Let's see how it plays out. Let's take a look at the actual execution now. If Skies just goes in aggressively through that door, that could be really interesting and cause an early end to the round. However, defenders are acutely aware of that as well. So headhunters, you know, he was peeking out there. Nobody was in the general area, but he will absolutely kind of deny entry to the attackers, which looking at the current positioning kind of implies that the push is going to be coming off of uh, office rather than CCTV and the other uh, bomb site, basically. Whoa, is that what? I don't, Did I that? don't know how he, it seems oh, as if that- Oh, he shot through the gap. Oh! He oh. shot through the guy. I didn't know you could do that. Neither did I. That's going to be the impact frag. Man, and another I'm kill. Freaky. Double kill now. Freaky's just on another level. There's no <laughs> <laughs> direct <laughs> impact. Downs, direct impact. Downs a thermite. And just like, oh my god, what did we just see? A perfect flawless round. That Phoenix was... lost nobody. That was... <laughs> Both you and I are dumbstruck. <laughs> I was, like it. I've never seen that. I didn't know you could do that. Neither did I, to be honest. Leaky came in clutch. That he was the play. So did. He so did. He waited to use that. There's. He didn't use it at any point in time. True. He waited to use that. And All right. Okay. So the cat's what? out of the bag. Is Surf gonna turn that against Phoenix now? That's my I, question. I, I don't know. Fleeky's got some plays that we've never seen before. <laughs> and now he's on Jackal, who he hasn't ran at all of this game. All right. So, get, on, get on Pro League, yo. Get on Pro okay. League right now. Okay. So, Jackal now on the board is going to be a game changer. So, Jackal, as we know, is a super powerful operator. Um, and especially with how that they've been how they've been roaming, you have a Legion, you have a Buzz on Wamai, you have uh, Ajax being aggressive with the smoke, uh, and you have Wupu on a uh, mute, which will most likely stay uh, round objective. And same thing with uh, Gab Hound. So not too worried about. <laughs> As you say this though, he's not exactly. Wupu, okay, Wupu's, Wupu's just going against the grain right now. He might be just doing this for drones. Yeah, probably. He, he's probably just setting up for drones. But most likely, you're going to keep your mute on on site simply because the MP5 is that particular MP5 uh, is not great at range. It's it's, it's good not. up close and it's good around objectives and it being a small gun, um, you don't have to worry about what we saw before with shotguns poking through and all those poking through. So it's it's a very you can conceal yourself a lot easier. So he's gonna be sticking around. But now that the Jackal's on board, and you have Fleeky on it, who can now do things that we didn't know were things, uh, Fleeky's <laughs> probably gonna be uh, aggressively hunting a Buzz and uh, Skies. So I have a feeling Phoenix could come away with this, but we'll have to wait and see how it goes. That wall was not reinforced. Wow, if you can plant the diffuser in front of that opening, it could be so freakishly difficult for uh, Surf to do a retake, considering Fleeky's angle here. It's next to impossible to counter from the inside. Forcing an operator to run up the staircase to run out with Would a have been nice. could waste critical time. Critical, yeah, it could waste critical time. At this point too, like you could have thought, maybe you could have switched out the buck for a Zofia, uh, knowing where they were at. And that's uh, gonna well, be a buzz once again, playing Wamai using the, uh, the range. Using the for same him. angle he did last time too. Exactly. Does he have a rotation behind him? He does as well, so he could just like crawl back if the pressure comes to be too much for him. And you know, he, we're seeing two, maybe three silhouettes if we want to consider the one that's throwing. That's going to be basically three attackers that he's holding up on his own. He barely did not get the kill here. Kryptonite, however, took loads of damage, but both players are still going strong. It does look like they're rotating out though. They're gonna leave them be. Uh, Skies and Wamai, or yeah, Skies and uh, Abuzz are gonna be left to their own devices now. Uh, but they will. Oh man, the, uh, <laughs> get there. that ESL camera playing tricks with the uh, 
with headhunters not able to take it out but he will be pushing into 90 though then now his position is given away though they know exactly where he's at yeah but about like the peak, peak fats you know he can just take the good man out it's no real danger no but as well they're not acknowledging it you do well, i guess you do have three people over here in fountain so uh, in all honesty you could actually push objective and leave these guys alone completely Probably, yeah so uh, but as I said, I he's doing just that. Yeah, he's doing just that. There's only one defender remaining. Probably Wopu, right? Uh, no, Wopu is not even LBJ. A plan could be feasible. There's also a few smokes on the attacker's side. Now he's going to be downed. Every and all remaining defenders are on the top floor. Granted, they're sitting by the hatch, but you know, if you plant in the bathroom, there's next to nothing they could do about it. Basic nope. getting the kill on Ajax. That's looking pretty good for Phoenix now. Oh, looks away just as the head of the IQ pops around. And it, as he gets shit. pinged too, you know, he looks back and she's gone. So uh, it is down to uh, a 4v... I want to say a 4v2 at this point. Wupu is down. It doesn't look like anybody's going to be yeah, able to get him up either. So revived. he will have the Legion though. Legion can come in clutch at this point, but it doesn't look like there's <laughs> any sort of... They don't even bother to kill him though. He's just no. getting intel at this point. He, yeah, he's just... Oh, there's a massive battle eye band. Good. Massive. Yeah. So he does not cut off the rotation. That might have been the one and only mistake that we're allowed. But no, Alba's not one. One v three situation. I want to say, yeah, Wopu is going to bleed out, and it's too late now. It is down to the Where line. is the diffuser? Why is it not being planted? Is it not on bomb site? There you go. Basic has it in his back pocket. He's going to have to drop down. He's going to have to be playing aggressively. It's now or never. Get the kills. Deathmatch type of situation. He did not jump down, and now he's just kind of lost a bit of time. That hatch has been opened. It might also. Uh, enable an unexpected roam game. It does not. Phoenix is going to win the game. Phoenix, looking very aggressive. Had a little bit of a struggle at the first, but uh, unfortunately, uh, not having uh, Surf, not having Phoenix in his number. Phoenix's number. Starting off strong in the beginning, able to get two quick matches, but then it was just a back and forth battle at this point. But I will say, Fleeky came in clutch at the end. Fleeky will now be the is now my MVP of this game for that <laughs> last play with that Meister, a hundred percent. That's what got them this win, 100%. Um, I have to write this down now. Fleeky, MVP. <laughs> there we go. So that, that's, that's going to be a victory for Phoenix. A close game. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't matter how you got, you got there. The only thing that matters is that they won. Yes, and... they won. And they won very... Uh, I wouldn't say it was convincingly, but it will say... At it, wasn't it, was a, it was a six to eight. You know, we went into overtime, but once we were in overtime, uh, we just, uh, Surf didn't get a single round. Yeah. So. All right. So, uh, if we jump back into. All right. Hey, ciao.